I'm trying to get back to China to continue learning Tai Chi, and I'm taking the train. In a world where time is money, spending 12 days stuck in a metal box on wheels may seem like a crazy way to travel, but I think I might learn something by slowing down. Right, leaving Europe, here comes Moscow, Russia. I've never been to Russia before, and we're gonna get progressively colder as we go further east. All right, I've got about three minutes to get on this train. I need to hurry up. Speed of our traveling increasing and increasing time to time, maybe months to months, we have a fly. 35 minutes from Minsk to Warsaw. It's too, too, too quickly to understand something. I prefer to uh, travel by train. I can sit in with my notebook and uh, write something. We need this day. We need this time for ourselves. Every single wheel on the train is getting changed right now. The width of European rails is four foot eight and a half inches. Russia's is five foot. So every time this train leaves Poland, it has to go through the nutty process of changing the wheels. The Europeans built their trains before the Russians. The old Festiniog Portmatic narrow gauge railway is still this sort of link with the past reality today. So the Tsar could have chosen back in the 1800s to follow the same width as the Europeans, but he didn't. Why would he choose such an inconvenience? It's thought to come down to the military. If an enemy at your border needs to change their wheels, attacks come slower. Indeed, in World War II, the Nazis were frustrated by the need to move over equipment. But it also made life difficult for the Russians too, when they were the aggressors in the war against Turkey in 1878. Just passed through the Belarus border, left the European Union now firmly into the Russian sphere of influence. I was a bit on edge. Going through a border is not exactly the most relaxing activity. And yet borders are everywhere. Open up an atlas and you see borders between continents, oceans, kingdoms, republics. And then there are the borders of old. The USSR, the Mongol Empire, and lost civilizations. The amount of death and suffering that has resulted from this business of borders. But it's not just us humans that are obsessed with marking out, defending and expanding borders. Animals do it too. You have the falcons that will literally tear apart any trespassers. The honey badger which ferociously defends its den. I guess this desire for borders comes from a need for security and a fear of the unknown. I've been reading accounts of the Trans-Siberian Railway in USSR times. And the border back then was much harsher than what I experienced. Back then, there would have been rifles pointed at me and rabid, barking German shepherds. The USSR was fearful of the unknown, the foreigner, what they might see and the ideas that might slip out into the Soviet Union. But the fear also works the other way. Even today, we are told that Russia is a potentially dangerous dictatorship where the people are cold. And yes, there are problems with the government, freedom of speech, democracy, things that we care about in the West. But I imagine there are more things that connect me with the Russian people than separates me. I imagine they have the human worries and ambitions that most of us do. On one level, yes, we are separated by borders, but on another level, that separation falls away. We're human beings, different expressions of life on this planet, parts of a greater whole.
All right, good morning. I must have slept about 10 hours. Ugh, I actually slept really well. And look, I'm on my own in this in this uh, cabin. This is luxury, this is great. I'm pretty sure we're in Russia now. I just checked my GPS and I haven't had my passport checked. I don't know if they forgot about me. I don't know if that's gonna cock things up a bit. Let's go ask. Surely they would have opened my door. It's all good, there's no border between Belarus and Russia, so I didn't have to have customs. Phew! <laughs> I'm in Russia, oh yeah, here we go. St. Basil's Cathedral, commissioned in the 1500s by Ivan the Terrible. And according to legend, the Tsar thought it so beautiful, he ordered the architect be blinded so that he would never surpass this creation. <music> Moscow is an enchanting city. Spectacular architecture. Stylish people. Having spent just a few days in Moscow, I don't really get the sense that this was the former capital of the USSR. There aren't many leftovers of communism. In fact, it just feels like a metropolitan, capitalist, Western economy. All the Western brands are here. There's the odd aggressive blacked out Mercedes driving around. I imagine the part of the Kremlin or some sort of oligarch that needs to get somewhere quick, uh, but I can't confirm that for sure. Today I'm off to Siberia. The temperature at the moment is minus 32. Oh my God. I have never been in such cold before. I don't know how I'm gonna handle it. I mean, I've been cold in Moscow and I'm wearing most of my layers. In Siberia, we have two lovely people who have volunteered to join me for some adventures. So we're gonna get deep into Siberian culture and really see how these people live their lives in such cold and harsh climates. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited. 